The purpose of this video is to get you to be able to take all of the different data sets that you have downloaded and to merge them and stack them into a single working data set. And you'll remember that we looked at before a representation of what my working data might look like for my COPD model. And so we have the different um, variables that I'm going to be using in my model. Here's my outcome variable. I'm going to have some variable that's going to represent my exposure. And then I'm going to have all of these variables on which I want to condition my model. And we said that the way the data are structured, one row of data are the data that we have for one person in our data set. And we saw also that the situation we have is that the data we need are not only in different data sets, and so we need to put the data together for one particular person, but we also have data from two different cycles. I'm using the 2007 and 8 as well as the 2009 and 2010 data. And so we need to not only connect across an individual, we need to stack the data from different cycles of the inhane survey. So if we come here to Windows Explorer and we look in the inhanes folder that we've created, the first thing I want to do is I want to create a new folder that will be the repository of the working data. And I'm going to just call it working data. Now I like to do this. I like to have one folder for my original data, one folder for my analysis, and one folder for my working data. Generally, I don't have a temporary folder, but this is just because we were downloading a uh, data set that uh, was in a different kind of format rather than SAS format. So we had an extra folder here for those export files. Now my SAS data sets are in the data folder and I have eight of them. And I know that I'm going to have to use all of these data sets in my SAS code and I'm going to have to create a live name statement to point to this folder. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick up that address. So I'm going to click copy address as text. And now I'm going to go over to SAS and I'm going to start writing my code. So we already know how to create a live name statement. Oh, I've got the caps lock on. Let me do this. And these are going to be my data. So I'm going to use the label data as I always do. And then two single quotes, a semicolon, and then the path name. Now I'm going to save this. Now I think where I'm going to save this is going to be in working data and I'm going to call this create working data version one. And so now what I need to do is I need to read in all of these SAS data sets into my SAS code. Now we already learned how to do it for demo E. Let's go ahead and do that data demo E semicolon set data. That's the pointer, this live name pointer, a period, and the name of the SAS formatted uh, data set, which is here demo E, a semicolon, and then a run statement. Now let's just save this and let's just see if this runs. So what have I got here? So here the live name was successfully assigned and it read in the demo E without any problem. So I just need to replicate this data and set statement for all of my data sets in this folder. The next one is demo F. So I can just copy and paste this. And so what I need to do is I just need to create the uh, eight sets of code to read in 
my eight data sets. So I'm just going to do that now. Okay, so now I have completed that. I have SAS code that will read all of my eight data sets from the folder in Haynes data and put them into the working memory of the computer and give each of them a different label to identify that data set in the working data of the computer. Let's just run this and see if it works. I'm gonna save my code here and let's just run the whole thing, see what happens here. So it looks like I see everything is in blue, so everything's probably fine. Um, you can see the number of observations that were read in each data set, and there are no errors, so everything is okay. Now the next thing we want to do, we have, we're going to be uh, connecting these data sets together. And right now we have downloaded all of the variables from all of the data sets. And if we start putting these together, we're going to end up with a really huge working data set. So what we want to do at this step is to limit each of these data sets to the variables that we want to actually use in our model. And if we forget a few now, it doesn't matter, we can come back later and add some more. It's really fast to create working data. And we're going to have this SAS code saved so it will be easy for us to modify it at a later step. So to think about which variables I need in each of these from, from each of these files, I'm gonna come back to this Excel spreadsheet that we created and you'll, you'll remember that we uh, kept a track of all of the variables that we're going to use and the data sets in which they are found. So here I have this first variable is from the SPX underscore E and SPX underscore F. So this first variable, if I just copy it, control C, and I come over here to where I am uh, bringing in the data that is called SPX, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put in a line of code here and I'm gonna use the command called keep. And what this means is, keep uh, these variables that follow the word keep. So the first variable I'm just going to put right here. And these variables are going to be the same for SPX underscore E and SPX underscore F. And so uh, I'm just gonna create the line of code here first in SPX underscore E and then I'll copy and paste it. Now I have a number of different variables that come out of SPX E. And so I need to just go through them one by one and put them into my SAS code. And I think to do this more efficiently, I'm going to reduce the windows for SAS and Excel so that I can see both of them in, at the same time. And so I'm working on this one down here, SPX underscore E. And so what I can do is I can just go through my Excel file and just one by one, I can copy these variables. So I'll just keep working on this until I get through all of the variables in SPX underscore E. Okay, so now I have finished that. And the, what I need to do is at the end of the list of variables that I want to keep from the SPX data, I need to put a semicolon. Now, one variable that I haven't put in here, which is actually going to be included in the keep statement for every single data set, is a variable that's called SEQN. Let me make it all caps so that it matches the other ones. And SEQN stands for, it stands for sequence. And this is the ID number for each of the participants. And every single data set in the NHANES contains the variable SEQN. And this is the way that we're going to be able to identify which data go with other data from different data sets in the NHANES data. And so we need, to, um, we need to include that for all of the keep statements that we're going to be making. Now, the data or the variables for SPX underscore F are exactly the same as the variables for SPX underscore E. So I'm just going to copy 
and paste this. So I have completed two of them now. Let me save this. And so what I need to do now is I just need to do this for all of the data sets by going through my list down here in the Excel file. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in all of these based upon what I've written in the Excel file. Okay, so now I have completed all of the key statements for each of my data sets, and I just copy and pasted the variables from my Excel file that I needed from each of these data sets. And again, we can add more later if we need them. So don't worry if you forget something. And you'll notice that each of the key statements includes SEQIN. We need that to link the data sets together. And there's one other variable that you might not have uh, picked up and um, which is the R-I-D-S-T-A-T-R variable. It's in the demo, it's in the demographics data set. And I would like you to add this one in. This one uh, is actually the variable that tells us if the person uh, was only interviewed in the household or if they uh, had both the household interview and the MEC examination. And that's going to turn out to be important later on. Now, probably most of you will have uh, already included the demographic data in your model because it has things like age and sex and uh, incomes, and those are very common. Um, but if for some reason you didn't need the demographic data in your model, uh, why don't you just go ahead and download that and convert it into a SAS file and include it now in your working data. You can just use sequence and the uh, variable here, R-A-D-S-T-A-T-R, because we're all going to need that variable. So let's just go ahead and see if this runs. I'm just going to run the whole thing. Um, let's see what our log file looks like. Okay, so it assigned the library name. I didn't have to do that, but it doesn't take much time, so I just did it again. So let's look at this first one. So here we have uh, it's reading in uh, demo underscore E from the hard drive into the working memory, calling it demo underscore E. The keep statement has eight different variables in it. And so what you can see here is that the work dot demo underscore E, and remember work indicates what the uh, data set that's in the, uh, the temporary memory of the computer. It has 10,149 observations and eight variables. So that looks right. So it's got eight variables. So we can see that each of these ran okay. It has the number of variables uh, that we requested in the keep statement. So it looks like everything is working well. So the next thing we're going to do is we're getting ready to link these data sets together. And one of the things that's required for that linkage is that the variable you're going to use to identify the same participants at different data sets, and in our case, that variable is SEQN, the data need to be in order sequence on that variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to now, we're going to sort each of the data sets and put, the, uh, put them into SEQ in order. And so the way we do that is in this line here, after the keep statement, we're gonna use uh, a new procedure that we haven't learned yet. It's proc sort with a semicolon. And um, as you might guess, it sorts data sets. And so the way it works is you say proc sort semicolon. The next command is by. And this is, it's asking, uh, you want to sort the data set by what variable? And so we want to sort it by sequence, S-E-Q-N, with a semicolon. And so this is enough, proc sort by sequence with a semicolon after each little piece. Um, that will sort the demo underscore E by sequence. Now the sort is going to happen in the working memory. It's not going to happen to the uh, data set that is on the hard drive. So we're always working with the file that's indicated by this data command right here. And so we just want to sort all of these working, all of these uh, data sets 
by sequence. So I'm just going to copy and paste this code into each of these. And I'll go ahead and save my code here. So what I'm going to do is let's, uh, let's just run this and see if it works. I'm going to clear the log file so that I don't have to find uh, which one is the current run of the code. So I right click, go to edit, clear all. That clears the log file. And I'm just going to run the whole thing here. Now let's see what we got. Looks like we've got all blue words here, so that's probably a good sign. Um, so the, here's the sort one. And so um, it tells us that there was um, 10,149 observations in the data set before it sorted. After the sort, um, there were still the number, same number of observations, and there are still eight variables. So this is what it looks like when proc sort runs well. Um, if there's a problem, it'll, it'll give you a warning. Usually, I think it's in red. Uh, letters. We haven't seen one yet, but um, I'm sure we'll I'm sure we'll have a chance to see an error um, as we go through this. Um, so it looks like everything's fine. So we've got all of the data sorted now, and so now we are ready to start merging these together. And I'm going to first merge the 2007 and 8 data together. And then I'm going to merge the 2009 and 10 data together. And then after I've merged them uh, for you know, the same uh, individual across files, then I'm going to, going to stack the two, uh, the two cycles. So um, one thing I can teach you now is the way you write a comment in SAS is you start it with an asterisk. And then after that, whatever you write is a comment. So I'm going to put a comment in here. just to tell me that this code is for the 2007 and 2008 data. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to merge the files. And the 2007 to 8 data are the files that end in E. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new working data set that's, that has the different data sets merged together. And I'm going to give it a new name. And we actually use the same kind of structure. We start out with the data command, and we have to create a label for this new data set that we're creating. I'm just going to call it data 2007 to nine. Is it going to let me do that? No, you can't use a minus. So I'm going to use, I'm just going to call it data 2007. And then I have a semicolon. Now here, instead of a set statement, what I'm going to use is a merge statement. And so um, what's going to happen is that SAS, instead of going and finding a particular data set and then reading it into the working memory, what it's going to do is it's going to merge a number of data sets together and then take the result of that merge and put it into the working memory. So what I need to do now is after the word merge, I need to list the uh, data sets that I want to merge together. And one of them is going to be demo underscore E. What else have I got here? mcq underscore e, mcq underscore e. The next one is smq underscore e, and then spx underscore e. And after you list the data sets that you want to merge together by subject ID, you put a semicolon. Now, the next thing you need to tell SAS is, what is the variable that allows you to know whose data are in each of the files. And so you, you want to merge it by what variable. So the command here is by, and then we tell it the variable that is the uh, variable that links the files together. So each of these files has the variable seq in, and the data from the same person will have the same value for SEQ, and that's the subject ID number. And so this will merge these data together. We end it all with a run and a semicolon. 
And let's see if it works. Let's just select this line of code and maybe I'll save it beforehand. And I'm gonna right click, submit selection. Looks like it's all done. And let's see what it did. Here's the code down here. So you see that the first thing it's doing is it's reading in each of these four data sets and then it's creating a new working data set in the, in the temporary memory of the computer, calling it data 2007. It has 1,149 observations. That's the number of observations from the largest data set. And it has 26 variables. And if we were to add up the number of variables in each of these data sets, um, we would find out that uh, it adds up to this number of variables with a caveat that SEQN, um, whereas it uh, existed in each of these data sets, now it's only going to show up one time in data 2007. Now let's think about what's happening with these different data sets that have a different number of observations. Okay, so you remember this view of my merged data set and we said that these lines indicate uh, data for each individual on all of these variables. But we saw that the demographics data set is bigger than the other data sets. So for example, these age, education, income, race, and sex, these are all in the demographics data. But I might not have all of the data for smoking for all of these people, and maybe for COPD, maybe I will have even less data. So what's going to happen if we merge these different files together that have different numbers of individuals? Well, what's going to happen is that if an individual, if a, if a subject ID, and actually we can change this now because now we know the true name of it. This, this variable is called SEQN. If an individual, if a, if, a, if a sequence number exists in any one of the data sets that you're merging together, then SAS is going to include it in the merged working data set. And it will just include the values for the variables where they exist in the data sets. And so in this case where if, for example, we didn't have smoking information for individuals six, seven, and eight, but we did have their demographic data, then what's going to happen is that the data here for, num for smoking for number six is just going to have a missing value. And we usually indicate missing values by a dot. And so the same will be true for COPD. So after you merge your data, you might find that for some variables, the number of uh, missing data, uh, individuals with missing data goes up for this reason. Now for now, we're not gonna be worrying about this. We will pick it up later. Um, for now, we just want to get all of the data sets put together into a single working data set. Okay, so you can see here the demo underscore E has 10,149, MCQ underscore E has 9666, et cetera. So the final data set has 10,149. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to do the same thing for the 2009 and 10 data. So I'm just going to update the code based upon what I had before. Let's call this 2009. Now all of these are going to be Fs instead of Es. I'm gonna save my code and then um, I'm just going to run this and see how it goes. Let me clear the log file first. Okay, let's see how it looks. Looks like it is okay. So again, the final working data set has the same number of observations as the demographics data. 
Okay, so I have created two files. These are merged by the sequence number. So what I've done is I've connected the data for individuals that are contained across different files. I've connected them together using the sequence number and I've put that into the temporary memory, the working memory of the computer. The 2007 and 2008 data, I've labeled that data 2007. The 2009-2010 data, I've labeled that data 2009. And so now what we want to do is we want to stack the data. Let's take a look at it. So if you look at this diagram again, what I've just done was to take the variables that were contained in each of these data sets. And here on the top, we have the 2007 to 2008 data. And here on the bottom, we have the 2009 to 2010 data. And I have merged these files together using the subject ID number. Uh, we know that this is actually called sequence, S-E-Q-N. And I've connected these together. And I've done that for both the 2007, 2008, and the 2009 and 2010 data. And so now what I want to do is, is I want to stack these two data sets together. Now, this is only going to work well if the variable names are the same in both data sets. Now, I'm assuming that probably for most of you in the class, um, the, the variable names are going to be the same because the inHANES data across different cycles are actually quite consistent with each other. But if you happen to have a, a rare case where you have variable names that change across the um, different cycles or the coding changes across the different cycles, um, just uh, send me a message and we'll deal with your cases on a one-by-one on a -one basis. And so now what we're going to do is we're just going to stack these two data sets together after merging them by the sequence number. Okay, so the final step is we want to stack these two data sets. And the uh, way we do that is we say data... And we, I'm going to give this a new name. I'm going to call this the working data. I'm just going to call it work data. And the way we stack two or more data sets together is we use the set statement like we did before, but we list both of the data sets, two or more data sets that we want to stack on top of each other and then we finish that with a run command. Now let's see how this works. Let's go ahead and clear the log file. And I just want to, let me save this. So I just want to run this one line of code, submit selection, and let's see what we get. Okay, so now what we can see is that there were 10,149 observations in the 2007 and 8 data. There were 10,537 observations in the 2009 data. And now when I stacked them, I have a new data set. It's in the temporary memory. It's called work data, and it has 20,686 observations and 26 variables. So I've created a working data set, but it's in the working uh, or the temporary memory of the computer right now. And so the last thing that we want to do is we want to write this to the hard drive to save this working data so that we can just call it from the hard drive in the future and we don't have to go through this building of the working data each time we want to work with our data. So we have to decide where we want to save the working data and I want to save that in the working data folder. And so I'm going to come here and I'm going to grab the address for it. Go back to SAS. I'm going to create a new lib name statement up here. And I'm going to call this one work. Two single quotes and a semicolon. And there is the path 
I'm just going to go ahead and run this. Let me save that. And let's see if it ran. Oh, didn't work. Error in the live name statement. What did I do? Oh, I can't use those. So the SAS system library work may not be reassigned. So I'm using a reserved code uh, in SAS. We saw before that it calls the data sets it has in temporary memory work dot. Um, it says that it, it has reserved that word for itself, so I can't use it. So here's an example. Here's our first error. You can see that the errors are in red here. Um, so let me choose a different name. How about working? Let's see if SAS will let me do that. Okay, now it looks happy. So live ref working was successfully assigned as follows. So now I can use working to point to this working data folder on the uh, hard drive. And so the way that I write it to the, um, the way that I write it to the hard drive is the data set that I want is in temporary memory right now. It's called work data. And so I want to write a data set to that folder. So I'm going to use the pointer followed by a dot. And then whatever name I want to call this uh, on the hard drive. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call it work data 2007 and or how about 2007 to 10. And then a semicolon and then set, and I just have to tell SAS where to find the data set that I want to put onto the hard drive at this address with this name, and that is just the one I have in temporary memory that's called work data. And I don't have to use work dot, uh, SAS knows that uh, where that one is. And then I say run, and then let's see what happens when we run this code. Let me clear this, oops, let me save. And then let me run this one line of code. And it looks like it worked. Let's go over to working data and see if it's there. And there it is. So there is our working data set. It's a SAS formatted data set, work data 2007 to 10. Um, that's the name that I gave it. And this contains the 20,686 observations. Those are the number of individuals in the data set. And I have 26 different variables. So you should be able to do this now for your own data set. Um, give it a try. And then we will be uh, one step closer to working on our models.